Hello, welcome to Star Productions. This is Max Desir with Star Productions, spiritually trained and renewed productions. I got a treat for you today, my friend, ministry partner, CEO of Generation 228, and now brand new author is back at the Star Production Studio. Stay tuned to find out more. Hello and welcome back to Star Productions, spiritually trained and renewed productions, where it's not enough to be talented, you have to be spiritually trained and renewed. Mm -hmm. Today I have with me the one and only James Michelle. Welcome back to the Star Production Studio. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Happy to be back. Happy oh to be man, y'all might remember James Michelle <laughs> from last year's Star Productions show when he introduced us to the brand new, to the brand name, Generation 228. That's right. So James, uh, as we open up today, tell us how have you been, what you've been up to? Man, I've been great. God's been faithful. The brain slowly but surely been growing and the word been spreading out there. As you can see, I'm wearing my uh, logo once again <laughs> today. So uh, we've been wonderful. So uh, again, growing slowly but surely. Awesome, awesome. Could you tell us, since it's been a, almost a year, what is new with Generation 228? Because I'm, I want to know what we can do to support the brand. So tell us what's new, what's been happening, and uh, give us some more information about Generation Definitely, if you are on social media, uh, definitely, uh, you need to uh, go to our webpage. That way you can see what's been happening. We are expanding the brand just beyond having just a t-shirt. You mm -hmm. can now have accessories, you know, like bracelets or necklaces like I'm wearing uh, right now, bow ties and different things. Again, please, if you are not uh, doing so already, we need you to go on our Facebook page. We need you to go to our, on our website, generation228.com, mm -hmm. and take a look and help us spread the word. Because again, our motto is to reach out as many young people as possible, and we are using uh, fashion as a platform to do that. Absolutely. You know, how can we support your brand? Uh, should we be buying more apparel? Should we be sharing uh, your social media information to our network? How is it can we uh, push the name, the brand, Generation 228? First and foremost, it's prayer. You know, we believe in prayer. We need your prayer. Um, so please pray for us and secondly it's all of the above yeah you need to go up there and get your apparel that way again could be a conversation starter when you're out there working uh, and also uh, spreading uh, help us spread the word you know via your network go to our web page go to our Facebook page uh, go to follow us on Instagram follow us on Twitter and help us spread the word awesome awesome you know since the last time we chatted uh, you dealt with a tragedy in your life mm. and uh, just wanted to know how are you doing with that and uh, are you now becoming somewhat of a bridge for people who go through that? What has been the update on that? Yeah, personally, by the grace of God, I've been doing great uh, healing uh, for some of you who are meeting me for the very first time uh, almost two years ago. Uh, I uh, uh, met, uh, lost my wife uh, to cancer, my wife 15 years uh, to cancer. So uh, we are now a single dad raising um, two young children. My daughter is four, son is 13. Mm -hmm. uh, but by, again, by the grace of God, we are doing great uh, healing with everything. And I, I just love when the Bible says that all things are working for good and for glory. And, and, and every pain, you know, God is really using it or can use it you know, to bring some good out of it. And I've had, as a result of that, uh, opportunities really to minister to uh, uh, different folks, men and women, you mm. know, who have gone through the same thing. And I can tell you that I, I was able to relate yeah. to them and really be a source of encouragement, mm. you know, as a result of what I personally uh, gone through. So, uh, yeah, it's been, you know, wonderful. And we are now <laughs> in the process of writing a book as a result of that. So wow. uh, we've been doing really good, praise wow. God. Wow, yeah. Yeah. man, that's exciting to hear. Of course, I'm going to dig right into that. <laughs> I want to know about the book. Tell us about the book. What is the title of your book? Uh, the title of the book, it's uh, Perplexed But Not in Despair, My uh, Personal Spiritual Journey from Faith to uh, Functional Faith. Wow, <laughs> nice, yeah. nice. Where did that idea come from? 
Well, basically, it's out of that pain, that tragedy. Mm. I just felt as I've been connecting uh, with folks, we have gone through the same thing too, and I'm able to minister to them and see that, okay, I am further along in the process of mourning and the process of healing. Yeah. So I've been sharing my experience with them and seeing the benefit of that on a smaller scale. So I thought it would make sense definitely to uh, have that published. That way I can reach as many people as, as possible. We have gone through a similar situation yeah. to hopefully find hope you know, and what they are going through right now. That's exciting, exciting. We've got an author in the house today. <laughs> so you're probably going to be mentoring me when I'm writing my, my first book. That's exciting. Yeah. What is the book about? Well, again, the book is about hope. It's about tragedy. How you overcome, you know, mm. the biggest tragedy in life. You know, yeah. if you are a person of faith, you know, uh, I know how devastating this could be. You know, the Bible said that hope deferred you know, make it's the made heart. the, the my heart really sick. So yes. uh, when you've been standing on the word of God mm -hmm. and you are believing, you're declaring, you know, you are stretching out your faith, but yet not having the outcome that you have hoped for. So uh, how do you deal with that? How do you process that? All the questions that mm -hmm. we sometimes are too afraid to articulate or put into words, you know, how could a good, generous God, mm. you know, let something happen? Why me? So you great know, questions. Questions like that, Ooh. that a lot of us, you know, deal with, but not a whole lot of um, um, uh, outlet out there. People are not um, open enough, you know, because sometimes, we, you know, if we are in faith, you know, we should never deal with tragedy, with pain when that's, that's not That's a lie. <laughs> that is, that is a lie. lie. Or right now there is, a, again, not pointing fingers, but there is a, 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 a stream of, of theology out there saying that, you know, if you are in faith, nothing bad will happen to you. That's a lie <laughs> you know, again. That is also <laughs> a lie. You know, I just want to deal with the fact that, hey, you can be in faith. You can be in the middle of God's perfect will, yes. but yet have to endure tragedy. Mm. And when things like that happen, how do you, you know, spiritually recalibrate and go back and say, okay, this is what happened and how I'm going to process it, that God in the middle of all of this, he's still good, he's still faithful. Ooh. You know, I'm still walking away, scratching my head. I yes. don't understand what's going on, but yet I'm choosing you know, in spite of all those things, to trust him and praise him. And, yes. And still, you know, uh, just like Peter said, you know, who, who do I go? <laughs> you know, you have all the answers. You yes. Know, there, there's nowhere that I can go. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Powerful. What has been the process for you to write this book? Um, therapeutic. And really, uh, it's been a healing process. Mm. You know, sitting down and, and sorting all the emotions, all the pain. Mm. Um, um, I've had to, of course, discipline myself, you know, getting up uh, super early in the morning and have uh, <laughs> those two hours set just to do that because my schedule, needless to say, right now, it's uh, very full. My days are very long. Again, from being a single dad, you have to prep meals, you have to get kids ready, I have to work <laughs> full time, try to run a business. Cosmetic you know? and all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. You're manicurist and then you do hair at the same time. <laughs> Not true, but yeah, almost. <laughs> so again, getting up super early in the morning and, 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 you know, go through my routine of, you know, worshiping and having my devotion. And again, it doesn't have to be an extensive, because sometimes you're just in the flow. You just mm -hmm. get, it's coming. Especially some chapters, you know, at least for me, they were uh, easier to write than others. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I push myself through. If it's 30 minutes, if it's one hour, if it's two hours, just sit down early in the morning when I'm rested, when I'm thinking clearly wow. to just, you know, uh, try to write as much as possible. Wow. Yeah. You know, both you and I are theological men. There are some expressions we understand easily, mm -hmm. but without giving too much away, could you explain to our audience, what is it like to go through a journey from faith to functional faith? All right. That's a great, great, great question. You know, faith, when you read the Bible in Hebrews 11, it says that faith, it is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of the things uh, not seen. Now, in uh, listening to current preachers and, 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 and what most um, church folks, if you will, are saying, you know, the theology nowadays, you know, when, again, you're in faith, 
you know, you are not supposed to face any challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. once you're in faith, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just like the Word of God says, you know, if you believe, if you're in faith, you can just declare it and claim it. You know, yeah. and, and whenever something bad, you know, happened to you, that's when you are in faith. That's right. when you're in the will of God. That's when you missed it somehow. You know, functional faith. You know, my definition of it. You know, at least, you know, at the very least, it's saying that hey, you can be in faith. And yet, you know, uh, be under attack from Go the through enemy. turmoil. You can be in, uh, in faith and yet see trials. Just like, you know, the Bible says, Paul said, hey, <laughs> don't be surprised, you know, when things are happening to you. And Jesus said, hey, I am the master and the teacher. If they persecuted me, Jesus, the Can master, don't be surprised if things happen to you. <laughs> so functional faith is saying that, you know what? Uh, I understand that I'm in the will of God. I understand that I'm men of faith. Mm. But yet, you know, tragedy you know, can happen. It does you know? happen. Yes, does happen. When it happened, you know, I won't have all the answers then. Mm -hmm. But I'm choosing, in spite of the tragedy, in, in spite of the pain, in spite of the confusion, yes. you know, in spite of the hurt, you know, to trust God, you know, anyhow. And nice. and I'm reminded of a, a David that says, "Do oh Job that says, do you slay me? <laughs> you <laughs> know, trust you. yet I will trust you. So, you know, that's one step beyond just having faith, but functional Ooh. faith, dealing with the day-to-day -day things that we all have to go through. Man, that's very, very um, practical, yes. very down-to-earth, very biblical. Yes. I love the approach. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. When is the release date for me to get my hand on this book? Right now, the tentative date is October 26, which October is a 26. very special date, you know, for my household. Again, my deceased wife, uh, her birthday would have been, you know, uh, this coming October 26. So uh, I would like to, uh, in conjunction with that, you know, release that. Message. It is as much her story that it is mine mm. so just to honor her i would like uh, we are sh right now shooting for the release date to be this coming october on the 26th yeah if publishers and editors and all those guys <laughs> get their stuff together <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, october yes, 26th. Yes. That's right. so uh are there any events scheduled to release the book are there any book signing that you're going to be part of you're going to be part of any concerts and be in the lobby and signing your books yeah we are looking at multiple projects right now. I'm working with an event planner to put that together for me. Uh, the timing is really, uh, I don't want to say bad, but uh, 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 my schedule for the next a few months. Oh, it's yeah, going you're doing to a lot of international really, traveling. Exactly. Soon. I'm going to be traveling, so therefore I will need some folks in place you know, um, handling those details, if you, you know. You know, for 5% off the book, I can. <laughs> <laughs> those details, so, yes, but we are looking at a, 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 a book signings, we are looking at different events that we're gonna be scheduled to be part of, okay. that way we can share our story, we can make the, the book available uh, to folks, but eventually, in the uh, big uh, scheme of things, we're gonna have the book available on Amazon, mm -hmm. on, um, Oh, uh, what's the big uh, bookstore? Barnes and Nobles. Barnes and Nobles, you know, and so forth. So, uh, yes, definitely more to come nice. uh, when it comes to that. Yes. Nice, nice. Wow, that's great. Well, we're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. told us the book is going to be available on Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, and anywhere else where book is sold. Mm -hmm. uh, in light of that, could you give us again all the different ways we can get in touch with you through social media? Yes, absolutely. Go to my main page, generation228.com. That's where you can subscribe to our newsletters to follow us. You can go to our Facebook page, uh, Generation228. Uh, and find us there. You can go to, uh, you can follow us on Instagram, the Generation Two Twenty Eight LLC on Twitter, uh, Generation Two Twenty Eight. That way, you can get all the latest, all the updates on how we are doing. Nice. Now, does writing energizes you or exhaust you? 
Um, depends. Again, it's a bit of the topic. You know, some topics, some mornings I'm flowing, I can stop. You know, some of the morning I have those, what they call those, uh, a writer's uh, block. Uh, block, you know. <laughs> I'm sitting down, staring at the wall, nothing is coming. Yeah. So it it's yeah. all depends, you know. And it, at least for me, that's my... Uh, uh, that's my first book, you know, and I'm learning quite a bit. Uh, it might be easier the second time around, but yeah. uh, it got again by the grace of God, we are pushing through and we're excited that finally <laughs> everything is coming together. Nice. And uh, will soon be available for you all to uh, to hopefully be interested in, 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 in reading my story and sharing it with others. Oh, I'm looking forward to that, man. Yeah. Looking forward to that. What is your writing kryptonite? What is that one thing if it's around, you can't write? It's got to be a way. You um, have to have a calm environment, instrumental music in the background, a little baby crying so far away. <laughs> Probably distraction, again, or when I'm tired, I'm not think, um, thinking straight, okay. you know, or there's a distraction and to get up and, you know, attend to my child. That's when, again, I, as much as possible, I try to do it, mm. you know, early in the morning when the babies are still sleeping, when I'm refreshed, nice. you know, I'm thinking clearly, I'm thinking straight. You know, that's when I try to do that. Are there friends who are authors who helped you in this process? Yes. By the grace of God, I've uh, been privileged and honored to be connected to many friends at church and outside of church. Uh, they've published several books. You know, I took the time to invest, yes. take them out to lunches and pick their brains and ask them to hold me accountable, read their books, of course, support them. Yes. You know, and it's been a wonderful journey. Uh, uh, learning from many wonderful men and women of God on their journey. Wow. Um, and, and I'm, again, very grateful. It's, it's a byproduct of all, all the hard work that they have done. Uh, that's why I have the opportunity today mm. uh, to really publish that book. Now, a good point that you made here is you took the time to invest in them yeah. uh, as a result. A lot of time people want to get somebody else's knowledge and... and that's right. uh, but they're not willing to invest some time, take them out to lunch, spend that's a little right. money on them. You that's know? right, that's right. That's yeah, right. Buy their books. That's right. You attract what you honor. Absolutely. You know, they've gone through it. You know, they publish authors. So it was, at least for me, very important to honor them, the gifts that they are, support them. Yes. <laughs> you, know, yes. Uh, you know, take them out to lunch and, and ask them questions on the process. And, <laughs> and, and again, I'm very grateful that they are more than willing to support and help uh, as much as they can. Fantastic. Yeah. What is the best money you ever spent as a writer? Man, I think one of there are many wonderful tools out there, but one thing for me has been a recorder. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I uh, again travel quite a bit, and sometimes in my car, I am able to use that recorder, you know, to record my thoughts. And I have that Speed Dragon software in my computer. I nice. can just go in and upload everything all i have to do is put some comma here and period there and nice. change a few things so so that I, does help you flow yeah, better yes absolutely. just not having to worry about I'll, typing yourself type exactly i'm not a great typer anyway so that <laughs> that recorder <laughs> yeah, has been a great help yes. fantastic fantastic yeah, yeah how many hours in a day do you uh type do you write again it's all depends some days i'm flowing i can go two three hours in the morning you know, some days, you know, 30 minutes, it's fine. And I don't get mad. Initially, it was a bit frustrating, but... Um, um, Do you have a goal to the one page a day? No, not at all. I, I, I don't. Like I said, it, I have some chapters. That it took me just a day to write because the subject was very involved, very dear to me. It was very easy to flow. Yeah. You know, all I had to do is to refine. Mm. But some other uh, topics and chapters, it took me longer to write. So... Um, now, uh, it's good to have that, you know, in mind if you're a first-time writer, to have it structured that way. And I had those things in the back of my mind, but I didn't want to box myself in that where I'm totally handicapped mm. and frustrated that, ooh, I didn't finish that eight page today yeah. so therefore you know i'm stuck right there so right. i give myself more grace <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to do it <laughs> well don't go anywhere my guest today author ceo of generation 228 james michelle will be right back have you recorded a beautiful song in the studio but now you're ready to show the world the imagery star productions we help tell your vision
All right, welcome back to Star Productions. I'm Max here. I am with the CEO of Generation 228 and now brand new author of the brand new book, Perplexed But Not In Despair, My Journey From Faith to Functional Faith. You wanna pick that up at Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, anywhere where book is sold, James is in the house again. James, we're gonna close with some questions that we may not know about you as we are closing today. Uh, first, I like to have my guests have the last word. Uh, talk to our audience, anybody you want to encourage at this time in light of where you are in life, anything that comes to you. I know that oftentimes you're inspired to speak some great things into our audience. So anything that comes to you at this time, we will take it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to be here in the wonderful studio of Star Productions. Absolutely. You know, it is always an honor. It was always a pleasure to be with you and to your listening audience. Thank you yeah. for the opportunity to uh, uh, to speak to them and hopefully encourage one person out there. Absolutely. Uh, in closing, really share with them 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 8. And most of you probably know the story of uh, Paul, a great man of God, mm -hmm. you know, a wonderful man of God. You know how he got converted and uh, how he works in power in terms of healing and being God's will. But yet... It came to a point in his life where well, that great man of God is mm. saying that I'm perplexed, yes. you know, but not in despair. I've been crushed, but not dying, you mm. know, and, and, and I just want to release that if uh, um, any of you out there going through something that feels crushing that you uh, can go on in life, mm. you know, that just like the Bible says, when we feel weak, that's when God is strong. All we have to do is to invite the Holy Spirit, to invite God's presence into that hurt, into that pain, mm. you know. And before you know it, yeah. you know, you'll be doing things or overcoming things, you know, that you had no idea <laughs> uh, that you could have. So that's my final word. That's my message because I know, especially in the times that we are living right now, uh, many of us are working really uh, with depression. P people mm. don't know, you know, the things that they're going mm. through. They cannot sleep at night. You know, some folks may be drinking on the down low, you know, or doing drugs on the down low or medicating themselves to go to bed. You know, I would like to encourage wow. you know, some of you out there mm. that there is a way out, you know, mm. and that way out, it's when you invite Jesus in, he comes in wherever that you are and mm. bring, you know, strength, bring peace, bring joy. Again, it's not a guarantee that, you know, everything will change overnight, yeah. but you will have the strength mm. to go through. You will have the strength to overcome. And even if you are to stay in that situation, God, yeah. just like Paul, will give you the ability to still have joy, to still be able to raise your hand at church and praise, yes. you know, and uh, again, that's my encouragement to your audience. It's a great word. It's a great word. Mm -hmm. Very, very relevant right now. Both my beloved and I, we, we, we encounter a lot of people where seemingly everything looks all right. Yeah. But on the inside, there's a lot of work to be done. Yes. Powerful. Thank mm -hmm. you for that, brother. Man, as we close, uh, I'll just pick in a little deeper for our audience. What's your favorite food to eat? Man, favorite food. I think I have to say chicken. <laughs> I'm a chicken kind of guy. You know, jerk chicken, fried chicken, boiled chicken, grilled chicken, you know, curry chicken, <laughs> barbecue chicken. You know, I'll eat it. So I'm a chicken kind of guy. Nice, for sure. nice. Are you an indoor and outdoor kind of guy? Um, I guess it depends. You know, I, I can enjoy both, but if I have to pick one, maybe indoors. Indoors. Know? Yeah. Morning or night kind of guy. Um, again. I, I know I, you're I, up at <laughs> two in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're up I, I typically don't like to label myself. You know, I'm a morning. I can flow in either if I have to do. Yeah. I'll just do what I need to do. But uh, I was a morning person. I got to get my, I would, I'd love to get my day going early in the morning, you know, get on with what I need to do. Nice. Then move on. Yeah. What is one thing you like most about yourself? Man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, man. Um, <laughs> I got him, y'all. Uh, <laughs> For the first time, he's speechless. <laughs> wow. Um, man, the Jesus in me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
<laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, the Jesus in me, I like the fact that God, you know, just like the Bible says, Christ is being formed in me. Mm. And uh, that Christ, that Jesus, his presence is being released everywhere that I go. Wow. You know, I don't have to say that I'm a Christian. People are able to just the way that I treat them, love on them, able to, you know, to identify that something different. Powerful. And want to, you know, attract them. Nice. You know, hopefully point them out to Jesus. Mm. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> well, we're all going to close on that note. Uh, I am Max Desir. My guest today is the one and only James Michel, the CEO of Generation 228. Get your gears at generation228.com. We're going to put all the social media uh, uh, links out there for you. And go pick up his new book coming up, uh, possibly October 26. Mm -hmm. It's going to be on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Nobles, and everywhere else where book is sold. Mm -hmm. This is Max with Star Productions, spiritually trained and renewed productions, where it's not enough to be talented, you have to be spiritually trained and renewed. We are happy to have today James Michel. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. Bless you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Take care, y'all. Take care.